Hello, this is the Committee on Ben. I'm Patrick Sheldon, and I'm pleased to welcome our next guests, Eric Alterman and Jay Dixit. Eric is a columnist for The Nation. He has written 10 books and won the Stephen Crane Literary Award. Jay is former editor of Psychology Today and a leading expert on psychological research. We're talking job interviews and work-related stress. Now, unless you've inherited a castle and a royal title, you've probably been on at least one job interview. Likely you've been on a lot of them, and chances are you hated them. Well, one of our guests has some surprising findings to report about that experience. So, Jay, I'm going to ask you, I've read that research is casting doubt about the value of job interviews for, co for companies. Why would that be? Yeah, uh, it's true. You know, they've studied, when I say they, I mean scientists, psychologists have studied job interviews and they've assessed how good job interviews are at predicting performance on the job. And what they found is that, in fact, there was a study, they, they looked at 19 different assessment tools for judging candidates for a job, and they found that traditional job interviews are actually one of the worst ways to judge a candidate. Um, you know, it's, uh, job interviews are good if you're looking just to hire somebody that you like, but if you're looking for the best candidate for the job, then job interviews are actually one of the worst ways to assess a candidate. Well, if that's one of the worst ways, what's a better way to do it? Um, pretty, much, pretty much anything else is, is better than the traditional job interview. So the problem with job interviews is that uh, you, you know, they, they did a study where they found that the first 10 seconds of an interview actually predicts the, the performance uh, or the outcome. So the first impression that you make as a job seeker, you know, the handshake, the eye contact, you know, introducing yourself, saying your name, those 10 seconds actually predict whether you're going to get the job or not. And that's the problem because those snap judgments that we make at the very beginning are pretty much worthless. And human beings have a, a tendency, it's a cognitive bias that we have, it's built into our brains called confirmation bias, which means we have those first impressions. And then the, rest, the other 99% of that, of the interview, you spend not listening and assessing the candidate, but really just looking for information, hunting for information that's going to confirm your initial snap judgment and sort of building a story that's going to reinforce that first impression that you have. So why don't companies change their hiring practices? You know, it's, um, it's, it's difficult and I'm not sure that, uh, that it's going to change. People want to meet the people that they're going to, that they're going to work with and we just, we have a, a sense that we trust our own judgment. We trust our instincts. You know, you meet somebody, you feel good about them, and we want to go with that. Um, and so, so that's just another bias that we have, is, is we want to rely on our own intuition and judgment. But it's actually, like, like I said, it's one of the worst ways. So a better way, a better way to assess candidates, in fact, the best way of all those 19 assessment tools that they looked at is actually a work sample test. So that means that you give a candidate an assignment that uh, a piece of work to do that's similar to the kind of work that they'd be doing in the job itself. So you're hiring an accountant, you give them an, ass an accounting assignment, and then you assess their performance on that task. That's a far better way to predict how well somebody's going to perform on the job. There's a lot of other ways that, you know, like I said, pretty much anything is better than the traditional job interview. Uh, they even find that uh, tests of general cognitive ability, uh, you know, basically IQ tests are a better predictor of, of how good a person's going to be on the job. Of course, IQ tests are culturally biased, but even then they're not as biased as people are. And if you're going to do an interview, if you're going to do a job interview, a better way to do the interview than the traditional free form interview, which is, hey, so tell me about yourself. And you know, uh, if you had to pick uh, one song that summarizes who you are, then what would that song be? Oh my god, I love the same song. The traditional things that we do in a job interview don't work. A better way is a structured job interview. That means that you know, you're assessing uh, a series of candidates. I'm, I'm looking at five different candidates. I'm going to ask the same set of predefined rigid questions to every single candidate. And that feels boring and it's not spontaneous and it's not as fun as just kind of getting to know somebody and seeing if we have a connection and a spark and do we have a good conversation. But that information, you know, unless you're hiring somebody to, to be somebody who professionally answers questions, maybe if you're hiring a, you know, somebody to be a PR person and their job is to answer questions spontaneously, maybe then an interview is a, a good way. Unless you're doing that, then it's not valuable. So instead, you're going to ask a, uh, a series of fixed questions. You're going to have a rubric, a standard rubric, uh, assessment criteria for objectively assessing how people answer. And then you're going to use those same criteria to judge one candidate against the other. Eric, let me bring you in on this. What do you think of the hiring process and how could it be better? 
Well, nobody really ever hires me for anything. <laughs> I, was, uh, I had a job interview as an editor of the New York Times Magazine in 1990, and I'm still waiting for a response. <laughs> That's the last time. For, Good luck. for like six months, I was picking up the phone going, hello, hello, hello. Do you have any up. opinion on No, here's what I think. I think um, it depends on the job. You know, when you're hiring somebody to work with you, it's important how you do the job as well as how they do the job. And if you're hiring someone you don't like who is unpleasant or an automaton, even if they do the job better than someone you like, it may not lead to the best outcome, particularly since you're the one who's got to go there every day. So I think if you're hiring someone with whom you're going to work closely, it makes all the sense in the world to get to know them and to see what their favorite song is and why. <laughs> I mean, because people, people practice job interviews and they practice giving the right answer, but if you ask them a series of questions beyond the obvious questions, after they just say their one flaw is that they care too damn much or they work too damn hard, um, it's very important. Uh, as speaking as a kind of professional curmudgeon, um, it would be hard to find a lot of people I would want to work with all day long, and that would be a very important qualification. And you could only find that out in an unstructured conversation. Uh, it would be less important how perfectly they did a job because most people can do, you know, you can usually find more than one qualified candidate for a job and then you're just deciding on the basis of intangibles. So there are certain jobs, uh, as we get more, as, as, as corporations get larger, I guess it makes more sense to auto automatize the process more, kind of money ball it. <laughs> um, exactly. uh, but uh, in, a, in close, uh, in, in close circumstances like the three of us right here, uh, I think personality matters and it's an important part of the job qualification. So I think, uh, I think that study needs to be qualified by the type of job you're, for which you're interviewing. Well, what about this topic of rehearsing for the interview? The interviewer will rehearse and so do the candidates. So what would you recommend that they rehearse? Because chances are very very likely they're going to run into a traditional job interview. That's right, yeah. If, as a job seeker, if I'm looking for a job, yeah, I, I have to accept the reality that that is the standard way to assess a candidate, and I probably am going to walk into a traditional job interview. So then I think the thing to rehearse is, you know, you want to think about that first impression, and instead of only, you know, writing out detailed answers to complicated questions, maybe I practice, you know, with a friend, uh, who's role playing? I, I practice walking into a room and saying, "Hi, I'm Jay Dixit. Nice to meet you." And you know, looking at somebody dead in the eye and you know, smiling and, and those nonverbals, that that sort of X factor, that charisma that actually people look for, right or wrong, that that uh, recruiters look for. I can I can practice those things. I do think that since the traditional job interview, as we've acknowledged, is the way that things are done, I think that a lot of job seekers don't focus enough on on those kinds of of uh, intangible, nonverbal kinds of things. I also think that um, because people go with their gut, like you said, um, you know, as a job seeker, I can I can focus more on the relationship, the interaction, instead of thinking like, oh, am I going to say the right thing? And and I need to remember like X Y Z data fact number that I wrote down in my notebook as I was practicing. Instead, I can I can try to make friends with the person and and say like, hey, I really you know I'm enjoying talking to you. I this company seems great and. You know, fundamentally, we like the people who like us. So express enthusiasm, express liking for the person that you're being interviewed by, and show that you're eager. One thing that job interviews are really good at uh, assessing is how much somebody cares and how passionate they are. Um, and you can get a sense of that from the job interview and take advantage of that and express that as a job seeker. Jay, let me ask you about mirroring. What is it and why does it work? So studies show that there are a variety of things that we can actually do to kind of game the system of human interaction and get people to like us. You can actually control that more than you think you can. One of those techniques to get someone to like you, if you're thinking about it on that kind of strategic Machiavellian level, is mirroring, which essentially just means uh, imitating the, the body movements that the other person is doing. So if the other person leans back and seems relaxed, you can do the same thing. If they lean forward and seem engaged and are using their hands, you can do the same thing. And because the other person is doing something similar to us, you know, you probably wouldn't even notice it. Um, you might feel like if, uh, if someone is imitating your body movements that you would think, why are you copying me? What are you doing? Um, but people don't notice it. Instead, on a subtle, nonverbal, unconscious level, they just feel a little bit closer, a little bit in sync with that person. And it works. It works. It increases liking, studies show. 
Well, what are some of the other techniques for body language and posturing that will work? Well, as much as possible, uh, if, you can, if you can genuinely express positive emotions. So, you know, um, smiling is always great. Uh, if you can smile for real, if you can, you know, there's something called a Duchenne smile where you're actually, the corners of your eyes crinkle a little bit. If you actually can relax a little bit, have fun, and enjoy yourself, then the person will pick up on that, that genuineness and authenticity. And as I mentioned, if you like the other person, they're likely to like you. So, you know, look for, it's actually something that you can do is you can look for things that you like about the person and say, you know, uh, you seem really knowledgeable. Uh, I, I appreciate that. It seems like a good place to work. You know, you don't have to say it explicitly necessarily, but if you look for things to appreciate and like about the other person, they'll pick up on that and they'll like you back. Stay with us. This is Ben and I'm Patrick Sheldon. The committee will be right back.